Hi guys, welcome back to Gardening with Creations by DX & Co. Today we're going to discuss uh, some more on the gardening planning here in 2021. And I'd like to get into discussing the different types of growing beds that you may utilize, choose to utilize. I'm going to go through in-ground growing, raised bed growing, and container gardening. Um, and the pros and cons of each so that you can be educated and make your own decision on which avenue is best for you. So let's get started. I'm going to get started today with just the traditional original type of gardening if you will which is in-ground gardening. So in-ground gardening means you've got a plot of land, you may have a, an area of soil that's carved out, um, or an area that's sunny and gets a lot of sun and you want to look at doing a bed um, or gardening, a garden in that area. So let's talk about definitely the pros and potentially cons of that style of gardening. Um, so I'll get started with the pros here. Um, it will absolutely, your soil temperature will stay warmer longer uh, as opposed to other types of growing beds. Soil in ground actually stays warmer later into the year. So your season could be extended as a result of that. So your fall time or winter time for um, some of you, depending on the zone you're in, uh, you could be better off with an in ground garden for that reason it extends your growing season in that way um, it is a lot easier to prep or amend an in-ground garden than it is a raised bed or a container garden in that way what i mean by that is you can always rent a tiller for example or borrow one from a friend or maybe you even own one already and you can till up that soil and get it ready to go and you could even top it with a layer of soil and then turn that all in if you don't if you have clay or something like that so it's a lot easier to amend or get started with a with regular in ground gardening than it is other types um, you can actually expand your garden a lot easier with that it doesn't take building new area or fencing off new area per se you could just say oh i've got a 9 by 9 garden already I want to make that a 9 by 18 garden so you just extend that over if you have the land or space available so that's another huge benefit to an in-ground garden um, another huge benefit that people find is that location doesn't have to be permanent let's say if this is your first year with that garden uh, for example you thought you were gonna get great Sun throughout the year and unfortunately you just didn't you can always just let the throw some grass seed down let the seeds grow back in and, and there you go your garden's no longer there maybe you move it to a different spot or let, or perhaps you had drainage problems where it would flood in that area so on and so forth it's easily to move it's not a permanent fixture in your yard so to speak um, another great benefit of in-ground gardening is that it requires less watering not always but in most cases in-ground soil stays wetter or doesn't need to be watered quite as often because the soil doesn't dry out as fast. So as opposed to maybe a daily gardening routine you have in every other day or every couple of days watering your garden. So this is great for areas that um, have low rainfall or you have a hard time sourcing water, um, things like that. Um, you can grow a wider range of crops in an in-ground garden and because certain crops need deeper root depth uh, they need to grow wider than can allow for a raised bed and or a um, container so you know there are definitely a wider range of crops that you can actually grow with an in-ground garden as opposed to those other types uh, it is easier to navigate in an in-ground garden and what i mean is if you've ever tried to push a wheelbarrow through to raise beds and you didn't space them out quickly or efficiently enough, uh, it's very hard to navigate through there as opposed to a one wheel wheelbarrow can roll through the paths of your garden quite easily. So it is actually easier to navigate with tools and carrying shovels. You don't have to lift them up over things. Um, so that's a lot easier. Also, 
you can run hoses a lot easier or you can put in an irrigation system for your garden a lot easier so those are some great features or pros if you will to an in-ground or traditional style gardening if you will um, so let's get into a couple of cons for that style because believe it or not there are some cons to that and i want you to have all the options so it does actually take longer in the springtime, believe it or not, for your ground to warm up. Or um, So your spring or your, your early planting may be uh, delayed as a re result of it. So what you trade on the back end for warmer soil in the fall and winter, unfortunately in the spring takes a little bit longer. So you also have, um, you know, soil conditions. You may have dense, hard, rocky clay soil. You may have uh, contaminated soil from runoff, water runoff from factories, things like that. It's always a great idea to get a soil tester before starting a garden if you can. Uh, so those are some things about in-ground garden that um, unfortunately is a con. Um, you, need, you may need to rent or buy a tiller depending on the area you're in. Um, you know to get everything started if you don't have the very loose grass and soil and you don't want to dig it out by hand um, you may just not have the space you might be in an apartment uh, you might be in a very small yard you got kids dogs um, you just don't have the space for a, an in-ground garden so those are another thing uh, possible con depending on where you are or your situation uh, critters are a huge uh, issue with a lot of in-ground gardens. So a lot of critters burrow and climb up underneath your garden and an in-ground garden doesn't really allow for blocking that very well. Um, a lot of critters, pets, and, and kids can trample your garden a lot easier. Deer can come in if you're like us up north. Deer do come into even our back fence and backyards. Um, so those are, those are definitely some potential cons there. Um, it's very hard on your back, your knees, bending over and weeding and picking your crops and pruning your crops. Um, so it, it can be very strenuous activity to garden in a traditional style garden. Um, there are some areas that absolutely flood in heavy rain uh, in spring, sometimes summer. You never know, unfortunately, what Mother Nature is going to do. Uh, I've seen pictures of people who planted a beautiful garden and then the next week we just had rain upon rain for uh, what felt like weeks with just standing water that just completely wiped out their crops. Um, so it's important to know if you're in a valley or a low, um, you know, that something wouldn't necessarily happen in one of those other mediums. Um, Weeding is a lot harder to keep under control and requires really weekly up maintenance to keep up on weeding in a traditional style garden um, and in-ground garden. So there you have it guys. Those are just some pros and cons that I've found in research and, and personal uh, when it comes to in-ground gardening uh, or traditional style gardening. So let's get into the next one here, which is raised beds. So a raised bed uh, gardening is becoming more and more popular as you start to see it's it seems to be the wave of gardening as is and and I I personally love raised beds um, let me actually tell you what's defined as a raised bed when you're doing your research so a raised bed actually is any form created to raise your soil level so whether that be a half inch and maybe you built a border around it or that be an elevated raised bed. I'll link that video at the end of where the, you know, a raised elevated bed so you don't have to bend over at all. So there, there's many different sh types of raised beds, all different shapes and sizes. Um, and so raised bed gardening is definitely a very popular um, style of gardening as it is, but there are definitely still some drawbacks to raised bed gardening as well as pros. So let's go through those today. Um, so raised beds, uh, because the soil is actually above ground, uh, depending on the, the amount of soil, of course, they do traditionally warm up faster in the springtime. So that soil gets warmer, which means you can put your crops into the ground earlier in most cases. Um, they can actually be built 
with critters in mind and you can align the bottom of those raised beds and the sides of them with with chicken wire or mesh uh, what have you so that way critters can't actually dig up underground if you're doing an on-ground raised bed um, you know I, I'll be honest with you critters still seem to find a way in most cases but it does deter your rabbits your gophers things like that uh, moles from really digging up underneath and getting getting to your garden which is a great uh, option um, as I said they can be built to suit any length or area um, they can be built to size or height um, so that makes it a big difference they're very great for elderly um, or those with disabilities um, you know those with disabilities or in a wheelchair can still garden because you can build a raised bed wheelchair can fit right underneath it and they can still do their gardening and reach everything it's a fantastic option for that elderly so you don't have to bend and twist as much um, you know but there's a lot of, of folks out there that still still prefer the traditional gardening um, one of my neighbors was exactly like that 88 years old still traditional gardening ground garden refused the raised bed it this is why I'm going through the pros and cons so you can make an educated decision um, another benefit is the soil type you get to choose your soil uh, you fill it whichever soil type compost soil mix if you want uh, you can do um, you know uh, container soil pot potting soil um, peat moss you can make you can have a good healthy mix whatever medium you want to grow in uh, the garden with raised beds you know if you've ever looked online seen pictures or even personally have some it just gives a cleaner look overall to the garden um, very uniform shapes and pathways and so that's another benefit um, they're great for poor drainage because you can create the drainage area in there um, you know you get to if you have poor drainage areas like an in-ground uh, raised beds can actually offer a lot of benefit to to the way drainage can be done you can get creative with drainage styles yourself um, they can't be easily trampled like we discussed with in-ground beds are not easily trampled with by kids or animals um, so less chance of your plants being ruins um, it's a lot easier to attach a trellis system or a climbing area for your cucumbers or your bean your green beans or any really climbing if you're doing flowers and and things like that climbing roses it's a lot easier to attach those trellises to an existing structure like a raised bed um, so that's a, another huge benefit and weed control is a lot easier in a raised bed there's a, a large myth out there that raised beds you don't get as you don't get any weeds well that's simply not true unfortunately uh, weeds will happen in any type of, of can any type of gardening uh, but it is a lot easier to maintain you can actually do things like put a layer of cardboard so the weeds won't come up as easily uh, through that soil level um, you can get to them faster because you they're at higher eye level so you notice them faster and you can pick them out easier the soil is generally looser um, because you put it in yourself it's not compacted um, so generally speaking the soil is looser so it's a lot easier to pick out those weeds so those are some great benefits of raised bed gardening I'm sure you guys can think of lots more love to see those in the comments below let's discuss uh, a few cons believe it or not to those raised bed gardening so for starters material cost it costs money to build a lot of people love to build out of cedar which i highly recommend if you can afford it or you can source it uh, cedar is a great way to go as long lasting wood doesn't deteriorate or break down as quickly as other materials um, also there's a lot of methodology out there about do chemicals from the treated woods leach into the soil most cedars are already you know themselves treated um, or high tolerance to pests so they're not treated um, and so that's why people opt for cedar and raised beds but there certainly raises the cost cost for any wood in general is very expensive um, there's there's kits out there for plastic molds which are fantastic as well there's kits out there for brick um, masonry molds things like that you can really build out of any material but unfortunately it still costs to build that 
uh, then you actually have to fill that raised bed and it costs a lot of money in soil. Now there are great tips and tricks that you can do. I've got some raised bed videos um, that I'll, I'll link in the description that you know how you put sticks and logs and cardboard and things that are biodegradable to fill that volume so you use less soil. Uh, but unfortunately there is a cost to filling that with soil as opposed to an in-ground bed where the soil is already potentially there for you. Um, they do require more watering or more frequent watering schedule and the reason for that is because a soil in a raised bed not being in ground it does dry out faster. The sun beats it up, warms it out more, um, so it does actually dry out faster so you do have to keep a closer eye on a raised bed. Um, they don't last forever. Even cedar ones, they may last you a good 15 to 20 years, but they do break down and eventually need to be replaced. So raised beds do break down, aluminum raised beds break down, plastic breaks down. Um, over time, everything breaks down. Mother Nature is a beast and she will um, cause havoc on all those materials. So that is one thing that a raised bed does break down. So keep that in mind when you're doing a raised bed. Uh, most won't last you more than five to seven years on average. Um, soil gets warmer in the summer, which means again, like we talked about, it's great for warming up in the spring, but it can really damage your sensitive plant roots. There are some plants that just can't handle that heat. So when that soil's too warm, um, plants, even tomato plants can actually not handle that high heat and it can kill the plant because the roots get too warm. So something to keep in mind, um, you know, with a raised bed, with an understanding which crops you're putting into it. Um, the soil is a lot colder through the fall and the winter, which means that um, you're gonna have a shorter, shorter growing season when it comes to that. If you're planning on doing winter growing for some of your colder, hardier crops and maybe putting a, um, maybe trying to put like a, a, a double layer of plastic or something over them to grow them longer, your soil is going to get a lot colder, which means you may have to substitute some other type of heat source. Um, multiple rows of raised beds require a lot of space. So remember, you need to be able to fit tools and wheelbarrows as we talked about within ground gardening in those cases. So if I want a raised bed here and a raised bed here, I have a lot more space because I need to now have room in between, usually three to four foot in between those raised beds for space for you just to even kneel down sometimes to work on that. So raised beds traditionally take up a lot more space in your yard than per se an in-ground or container gardening, for example. Um, it is a lot harder to put in irrigation systems or hoses, dragging them around, uh, trying to drag, I don't know if you've ever tried to drag a hose around a corner and getting stuck and kinked and so on and so forth. It's very much like that with raised beds too. You get caught on stuff. Um, so really planning ahead with how your watering is gonna be and your placement is very important with a raised bed as well. Uh, Cause you can't just pick up a, and move a raised bed in most cases. Uh, it's a lot of work to move a raised bed. They're semi-permanent fixtures, which is another con. Um, and again, soil gets colder faster in the fall, so kind of shortens growing season. So those are some pros and cons to raised beds, even though raised beds are becoming more and more popular and they are a fantastic um, source for growing and really take a lot less amending to do. You can use the soil for a lot more years um, sometimes it's just a matter of topping it um, or fertilizing it and, and stirring that in and kind of a no-till garden a approach. It, uh, there are some definitely pros and cons to it and I wanted you guys to be aware of all that. So uh, let's get into our last one today and uh, so you guys have all the facts and let's talk a little bit about container gardening, another ever-growing popular um, growing avenue. And let's talk about some of the pros and cons, unfortunately, of that as well. So some pros to help us get started here. Um, again, uh, much the same uh, that you're going to find a repeat with some of the raised bed stuff, um, but good to just kind of list off in case you jump this far ahead in the video. Um, it does warm up quick quicker in the spring. Uh, that soil can warm up a lot quicker so you can plant sooner. 
Um, it's great if you're just starting out, right? So you may be hesitant on creating this large garden plot or even taking on the cost investing in, into a raised bed. You may have thought about plans on this um, and you're just dabbling into the garden thing. Container garden is a great way just to start out. Just to, I can grow something. Yes, I can do this. Um, get the fruits of your labor. Understand is this is gardening really for you, which I, I hate to say it. Anybody I know that gets a gardening bug, it's for them. Um, people who start growing always keep growing in my eyes. But it's a great way to start out, just to kind of test the waters. You don't have to put a high investment into a couple of pots and a, cup, a bag of soil uh, to get you started. So it's a, it's a great starter uh, for gardeners. Uh, plants can be moved in and out um, on the cold nights. So I don't know what it was about last year, but you know we had frost late into the year, even into June for us here in, in Zone 6A Michigan. And I recall people, oh, there's gonna, it's gonna be 32 degrees tonight. I gotta go out and cover my plants. Uh, that's a great part about container gardening. You can just pick up the container, put it in your garage overnight, keep the frost off of it. You can pick it up, put it in your house overnight. You may have pots all over your kitchen just overnight, but oh well, it's okay. You take them right back out in the morning and put them in the sun. So that's a huge benefit to container gardening. Um, another thing is you get to control your soil type. Um, you get to decide what soil you're going to put in there. Either you're digging it out of your yard because you think your soil is great and got a high area. Okay, great. Or you're buying a bag of uh, miracle Grow, uh, maybe some slow-release fertilizer brand kind so that way for it fertilizes over the next six eight months um, you know just depends on which style you want to go with uh, so it, it, it's definitely a great one um, you get to have fun with the types of containers you want to grow in you can paint them you can make ladybug containers butterfly containers I've seen tires as containers um, and you get to play with the placement if you're gonna do it on your porch or your patio you can kind of make a stackable design so a lot of artistry goes into container gardening if you want it to um, you can control plants that are invasive with containers so whether you garden in in-ground garden whether you garden in raised bed gardening I think every gardener would tell you if you want to grow mint it's a fantastic plant with lots of variety you want to container garden with mint because can, mint is a, is a plant that anywhere the leaf touches or the stem touches will grow roots. So it quickly spreads. Um, they say once you plant mint, you have it forever. And it's a very true statement um, that mint spreads. So that's an invasive style plant that, that definitely always should be in a container. So it's a great way for controlling invasive species. Um, you can move your plants uh, throughout the growing season as the sunlight changes so even morning to evening so my house the front of my house is in the east and so the sun rises up over my house in the morning so i could put my container plants out there and then the, uh, by mid-afternoon i could have them in my backyard where i get full sun basically from noon till 8 p.m in the summer 9 p.m in the summer um, so you can move your plants around to where the sunlight is or as the year shifts on my house right now most of the sun is on the side of my house where my garage is and i have no windows so uh, because it's on the southwest in that corner um, i if i'm doing container gardening i can kind of move as my season moves i can move my container so that's another great thing um, to do the um it uses a lot less soil per plant and what i mean by that is i might put one tomato plant in a five gallon bucket um, and i'm using just that amount of soil in that particular plant but if i'm putting that in an in-ground bed i'm not only using the soil for that particular tomato plant but i'm also needing the space around my tomato plant to make sure that i've got enough room for the vines and the stems and so on and so forth so I'm actually using anywhere from two to three square foot of, of actual soil um, versus a you know five gallon bucket which is vertical and I'm not using as much soil. So that's what I mean. Why I mean when I say you use less soil per plant, so to speak. Um, that's not true of every situation, but it it can be true. Um, 
It's easier to deal with pests or disease when, with a container plant. So number one, if you have a disease in a plant, uh, let's say tomato plant, like you've got blight on a tomato plant, um, that can easily spread to the rest of the plants. And it's a lot easier just to dump that container, replace that soil, get rid of that plant, as opposed to maybe having to take out four or five different crops because they've now been infected by um, that disease or pests, for example. I had a bad problem with these little green inchworms last year. There's a video on it. Just destroyed my uh, cabbage, um, my leafy greens in general. I, had, I fought them all summer. And I could have used neem's oil, things like that, to try to deter them, but I, I didn't get to it fast enough. But once you start to see that on one container, you can quickly identify that, spray that plant down. Uh, you can get to it a lot faster. So that's another huge benefit. Um, and containers, <clears throat> containers also can be placed um, closer to you in proximity. So I might have a container on my front porch or a container on my back porch, for example. I might look out my sliding glass door. I don't have one, but you guys might, and see that the containers are right there and remember, oh, I gotta water them. I've got to prune them, I've got to do fertilizer, so on and so forth. So they're right there, they're in your face, they're a reminder versus if it's in your backyard and it's 200, 300 feet away from you in the corner of your yard, it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. You may not think, um, oh, I need to go deal with that. I need to go take care of them. It's not so in your face. So that's another huge benefit to container gardening. Uh, depending on the placement you choose, of course. Um, and it's a lot easier to control weeds in container gardens. Again, you're choosing your soil type, so it's probably most of them are weed free, but that doesn't mean you're not gonna get pollens and things like weeds that float in. Um, but it is a lot easier to control because a lot of plants will overflow their container so they block out the sunlight, so a lot of those weeds can't grow. Um, but two, it's, it's just easier for you to see and pick them out really quickly. Four or five weeds in a small container is a lot easier to pick out than a hundred weeds in a, uh, you know, five foot garden, so to speak. So, um, a lot easier, a lot easier to deal with faster. So those are a lot of the pros. Again, um, some huge pros that carry over from in-ground gardening. So if you haven't watched that portion of the video, I would definitely recommend check that out. Um, but let's talk about a few cons to container gardening because there are a few. Um, so plants don't like to be root bound and what I mean by that is the roots like to grow and stretch out and, and you know spider out a little bit and so there are a lot of plants that just get bound up and root and, and they choke up and, and basically die and so containers depending on the type of plant can really cause root bound um, and stunt the growth of your plant or even up to killing your plant so um, depending on the type of plant you're growing may not be the right source for um, container gardening. Um, it requires a lot more water because not only is it m less soil than even an uh, in-ground bed, but it's, it's less soil than a raised bed even, so the soil dries out a lot faster. And I'm sure you've seen that with your house plants even, and they're indoors, not in the sunlight. So house plants typically, they dry up, depending on the, the humidity and dryness in your house, they can dry up anywhere between a week to two weeks but outside in the sun they can dry daily even twice a day you need to water your your container plants so you have to keep a closer eye on it, it requires a lot more attention um, it it does cost soil you you got to pay to fill those you so soil can cost money to fill those buckets um, like I said a tomato plant can be grown in a five gallon bucket I've done it successfully many times um, I've got a video on how to drill holes on it as well and, and make that successful. But unfortunately, um, that five gallon bucket, believe it or not, that's, that's a lot of soil depth to fill. Um, so that adds up very quickly when you have five, six tomato plants, um, and you've got some pepper plants and you've got, you know, your herbs and, and the list goes on, depending on what you want to grow, what your family eats. Um, they require more fertilizers. You can get those slower release fertilizers like I mentioned in your soil, um, but it doesn't necessarily last a long time. Even those you have to re-amend with, with fertilizers, store-bought fertilizers. I personally fertilize with fish tank water as many of you guys know. 
Uh, there's lots of nitrates and phosphates in that, and that's all the fertilizer I use personally, uh, but not everybody has access to that. So um, that's definitely something that is to keep in mind when you're, you're dealing with container gardening. Um, not all containers have great drainage. Um, even as I mentioned the five gallon bucket and how to drill drainage holes, that doesn't make it perfect. So drainage can be a real issue when it comes to water runoff with uh, container gardening. Um, so uh, as I mentioned before, uh, watering is, is a bit more of a chore, requires a lot of attention to detail. Overwatering and underwatering is really easy to do with containers. Um, there are potting soils that you can buy that actually help with this. Um, that are, are well draining soils or loose soils um, but unfortunately as those words get added to the bag of soil uh, so does your cost so um, it's just something to keep in mind the cost of the soil uh, they do get colder faster in the winter and the fall so while you are uh, able to bring them inside and you know have those actually be out of the frost unfortunately that soil does get colder which can kill the root zone and so forth um, and they need that natural sunlight so unless you have grow lights set up for your large garden inside it's going to be really hard to keep um, those plants healthy beyond the fall and winter um, other things like beneficial life forms like earthworms roly polies or pill bugs whatever you want to call them earwigs things like that that all um, uh, are in your soil they don't like to be in containers um, they won't find their way in containers very easily they even if you put them in there they may eventually find their way out and not go back in um, so you don't necessarily get them weeding through your soil breaking down your soil breaking down all the the components that are um, and the beneficial bacteria really creating positive in your soil um, so that is that is a huge negative to potentially container gardening as well um, so that's it guys that's everything that I have on the three different gardening um, you know materials that are to think about while you're planning your garden I personally do a healthy mix of both I do in-ground gardening I do container gardening or all three I said both um, and I do raised bed gardening. So I, I really do all three um, avenues and it's really, that may be a great fit for you. You may have an apartment, you can't do some of those other traditional styles. You can't do the raised bed style. Um, you may have um, a huge backyard, but have really bad soil. Um, you may have really bad weather and drain, you need drainage. You may live in an area where you need to move your plants into shade instead of sun uh, because it's just too hot for your plants and they're wilting. So all of these are huge factors when you're planting your garden and what's best for you. Um, I happen to live in, a, live in a pretty temperate climate where I get to really experiment with all three of those. But as such, my growing season is a little bit shorter than some of the other great gardeners out there. So. Things to keep in mind, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Get something out of it, a little bit of piece of it for every um, thing. And I, I just want to myth bust at least one thing that I found out there when researching things on the internet is that um, that you know there's a lot of myths about raised bed gardenings and container gardenings. You'll never have to weed again, and, and that's just simply not true. There's no such thing as not weeding, guys. Um, you got to keep up with the weeds. Yeah, you know, they're they're invasive species, if you will, and you got to keep up with them. Um, or otherwise, they'll choke out your plants. It doesn't matter what growing. But there are easier ways to deal with them, for sure. So, there you have it, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give it a like. Share it out with some friends. Um, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. This is only episode one. I'm going to go through a couple more planning tips about, you know, how to draw out, map out your garden. Um, you know, do some companion planting, seeds. So stay tuned for those. Hit that notification bell if you guys want to see that content to come. As always, guys, I hope you guys are enjoying your gardens and staying safe.